Mm-hmm. Sorry. Okay, uh, I think uh, everything is works and we can start. Uh, so good morning to everybody. Um, my name is Maciej Zdanovic. Uh, I'm representing um, Polish National Center for Research and Development office in Brussels. Um, and on behalf of Eva Kuczynska Lange, our director and uh, my colleagues, I have a pleasure to welcome you on today's uh, webinar on uh, Council recommendation on security, uh, research security uh, that were recently released. And today uh, we are with our honorable guest, uh, Mirko van um, Mayen. Um, we will have a discussion on this Council of Recommendations. And um, also would like to remind you about um, unmuting yourself because it's quite important to uh, let the, 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 our keynote speaker, speaker to, to, to speak without any interruptions. And now I will switch to Polish and then I will pass uh, the voice to our colleagues from uh, the, the, the co-organizers. Dzień dobry wszystkim. Nazywam się Maciej Zdanowicz. Jestem pracownikiem biura NCBR w Brukseli. Um, dzisiaj mam przyjemność zaprosić Państwa na um, webinar um, o angielskiej nazwie Council Recommendation on Research Security. Um, Rada Unii Europejskiej w, niedawno w, wypuściła rekomendacje na temat bezpieczeństwa badań naukowych. Um, I dzisiaj będziemy mieli okazję porozmawiać z naszym gościem honorowym Mirko Van Majenem na, na ten temat. Jest to pierwszy webinar z serii webinarów Research Security and Technologies with Dual Use Potential in the EU. Dziękuję bardzo, zapraszam do słuchania i zadawania pytań po prezentacji. Przekazuję teraz głos do moich kolegów. Uh, yes, Tadas, now it's now your turn. Thank you very much, Matze. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Tadas Tumenas uh, from Lithuanian R&D liaison office here in Brussels as well. Uh, and now I would like to switch to my mother tongue. Labas Ritas, ir pirmiausia, aš norėčiau jūs pasveikinti būtent prisijungus prie Lino biuro ir partnerių rengiamų seminarų ciklo jo pirmosios dalies, kurioje šiandien kalbėsime apie mokslinių tyrimų saugumą. Ir visai neseniai komisija pateikė pasiūlymą, kurio norima atkreipti dėmesį į mokslinių tyrimų saugumą ir užtikrinti, kad tarptautinis bendradarbiavimas mokslinių tyrimų ir inovacijų srityje išliktų atviras ir saugus. Todėl šiandien apie tai ir kalbėsime. Tai yra pirmas mūsų webinarų ciklas, antrasis bus skirtas dviejo panaudojimo technologijom ir tikiuosi, kad jūs irgi prie jo prisijungsite kovo ketvirtą dieną. O šiandien tikiu, kad ši valanda jums turėtų suteikti tikrai naujų idėjų ir įdomių diskusijų, todėl pasinaudokite proga ir aktyviai joje dalyvaukite. So now I'm switching back to English and I would like to pass the floor to our Hungarian colleagues. So Orshoja, the floor is yours, please. Hi, Tadas. Um, I'm happy to welcome to everyone. My name is Orsia Lugmeyer, and I represent uh, Ötvesoren University from Budapest and Corvinus University from Budapest as well. I'm really happy to welcome you here and uh, some uh, words in Hungarian. Nagyon örök, hogy jövözölhetem önöket itt, és reméljük, hogy érdekesnek és informatívnak tartják ezt az előadást. Ez egy teljesen új téma, és reméljük, hogy választ kapnak a kérdéseikre. Now I am give the floor to Bernard, uh, and then I will go. Hello, thank you very much, thank you. Hello on everyone and welcome. Uh, I'm Bernard Moritz from the Slovenian Business and Research Association here in Brussels. And I would like to say now a couple of words in Slovenian to our colleagues who joined. Lepo pozdravljeni dobrodošli, vsi skupaj, nas veseli, da ste se nam danes pridružili na današnji dogodek. Upamo, da boste zvedeli veliko korisnih informacij, če imate kakšen koli vprašanje, ga lahko napišete v klip 5. 
kot tudi po dogodku na elektronski naslov se borajan, vam bomo z veseljem pomagali. Thank you very much. So I would like to now pass back to Masej and to continue the event. Now I think we have Agota, yes? Ah. Yes, exactly. So no problem. Yes. Thank you so much. I, I'm Agota David and I'm representing the National Research Development and Innovation Office of Hungary in this committee. And uh, as Orsi already talked in Hungarian, I will, I think, save some time and immediately give the floor to our distinguished speaker, Mirko, who is behind uh, this uh, commission recommendation on research security. And uh, please uh, type your questions into the chat because we already received some questions in advance. So I will, of course, uh, raise those first, but uh, you still have time after the presentation of Mirko to raise your questions. So Mirko, the floor is yours and thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you so much. A good morning to everyone. Uh, my name is Mirko van Muyen. I, uh, I work in the Euro uh, European Commission, DG Research and Innovation. Um, Directorate uh, F, which is the International Cooperation uh, uh, Directorate. So my colleagues are country desks, you know, uh, EU, China, EU, US, etc. That kind of uh, uh, work is in our directorate and I'm dealing with uh, recent security. And recently uh, I've been working uh, on uh, this proposal for a council recommendation that I will present uh, to you. Um, yeah, really happy to be here. Uh, I think this is really uh, the time to uh, to present and to explain and to see uh, what kind of reactions uh, uh, it it uh, it leads to, and 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 what kind of uh, uh, things need to be clarified. Um, I will start. Uh, <laughs> I was tempted to to say that the rest of the presentation will be in my mother tongue, but uh, maybe I shouldn't do that. Uh, I will try now to to share my slides. Uh, it worked uh, five minutes ago, so it should work again now. Um, it's happening. Still not in something presentation is happening. mode, but That's yes, good. we already see the slides. And no, no, they didn't change. Yes, perfect. Thanks. Oh, that's perfect. Very good. Yes, that's perfect. I confirm. Now, look at that. So I start with um, um, maybe with, um, with the package on the uh, how this European uh, economic security strategy was launched in the summer last year. And um, uh, there it, it all started with these uh, three pillars of action with promoting, protecting, partnering. Uh, then a little bit later in October, there was this uh, Commission recommendation on critical technologies, where you have the risk assessment in these uh, critical technologies. It's a list of uh, 10 uh, technology domains. Um, and then, and I will do this quickly because then uh, there was on the 24th of January, there was this, uh, well, a month ago, uh, there was the, uh, a follow up economic security package published. Uh, uh, which contained uh, a communication, uh, uh, a regulation, but then the regulation is um, a revision of the FDI screening, the foreign direct investment screening, um, the recommendation that I will focus on, and there were three uh, white papers. And I, I understand that my colleague Marco, uh, same directorate, he will present at the next webinar, uh, one of the white, uh, white papers, uh, the one uh, on uh, options for R&D support for technologies with dual use potential. But there are still two other white papers from uh, uh, prepared by DG Trade, which uh, also are relevant for R&I. So I, I recommend uh, you, you look into these as well. Uh, and white papers, as you know, probably um, th th these are consultations. So you can react to them and uh, uh, on the basis of uh, all the response uh, collected, uh, the Commission will see what is a sensible next step. So in itself, it's not a policy proposal. That's maybe good to underline. I see that sometimes there's a bit of confusion there. Um, yeah, it's the, so the, 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 at the bottom of this slide, that's, uh, that's the one I will be talking uh, you through. Um, and usually, uh, you would say the, the next steps is the last slide, but I uh, I already practice a bit with with the presentation with pre presenting the proposal, and I, I think it's better to maybe do this upfront. So what we what we produced as the commission is a is a is a proposal for a council recommendation, 
And uh, okay, so that's now on the website, but it's now discussed in the uh, in the council. So uh, I've been uh, up to now. I've been the the the, the pen holder of this uh, proposal, uh, and I lost my pen now to the Belgian presidency, where it is in uh, in good hands. Uh, the Belgian presidency has decided to um, to start the discussions, the negotiations on the on the text um, uh, in the research working party, where the uh, attaches from the different member states are uh, are represented presenting their country uh, and they're uh, negotiating on the text, which means that the text uh, can change and will change uh, so as to find uh, a qualified majority uh, and uh, that the text can be adopted by the Competitiveness Council of 23rd of May. That's the uh, objective. But of course, if it is, uh, if more time is needed, then more time is needed. But uh, the, the idea so far and, and, and the impression we have from the first discussions is that uh, 23rd of May it should be uh, should be possible. So that's good to underline uh, some elements that are in the Commission proposal uh, may be uh, taken out or changed or uh, or maybe added uh, in the in the next uh, phase. I will present from the Commission, of course, the Commission proposal as it uh, as it stands, uh, and the, the negotiations take place uh, behind closed doors. So uh, I cannot say too much about it. Uh, but you can imagine how I mean, I, I will not disclose what is uh, what is discussed there, but you can imagine that there is a discussion uh, that member states will look into it uh, 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 with a view to see um, what is needed as the level of ambition, but also what is feasible. What what can we what can we deliver on? What can we commit to? And that's the that's the 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 angle the 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 perspective that member states look tend to look at these uh, kind of texts uh, because you don't want uh, to adopt a text which is completely unrealistic uh, for for countries. Uh, at the same time, uh, you don't want an empty text uh, neither. Eh? Uh, something needs to be done. Uh, it's an it's an it's an important uh, uh, issue. Um, then the proposal. Uh, this is the stru structure of the text uh, the, um, of the Commission proposal. It's an uh, explanatory memorandum. It's just to explain why we put this on the table. Uh, it's not negotiated, so it's not going anywhere. <laughs> it will be uh, on the website, but uh, nowhere else. Uh, and the real, the core of the text uh, starts with recitals and then uh, definitions and then some principles and then recommendations to the different levels. And we end uh, the proposal with uh, reporting, uh, sectional reporting. I will, I will go through the text because this also is um, um, uh, the, the, the narrative uh, the, the story behind it also goes uh, builds up towards uh, towards uh, the, the, the next steps uh, of course uh, don't worry I'm, I'm not going to read the whole text it's just uh, more to explain how these different elements uh, fit in and why it is there um so it starts with recitals, as always, um, uh, and that explains what we see in the world, uh, what is happening in the world, and, um, uh, uh, and, and what are we confronted with. Uh, so so to, to, to explain uh, also, uh, for instance, geopolitical context, all sectors are confronted with these uh, risks and threats, uh, for sure. Uh, but the our sector, the RNI sector, research and innovation sector, um, is special. It has a special status because of the characteristics of the sector. Openness and international cooperation are in the DNA of our sector. It's not a nice to have. It's it's the core. It's the core business. It's what we do. Uh, um, but also, if you look at the governance, the structure of the the sector, it's it's really char characterized by academic freedom and institutional autonomy. This this means something. This this has implications for how you govern such a uh, how you organize the governance of such a sector. You cannot just copy paste from the private sector. You cannot simply say, well, this is the transport sector, this is the energy sector, and this is the RNI sector. It's all the same, one size fits all. No, we need something specific. That's that's in the recitals. Tailor-made approach is needed. Um, are we starting from scratch? No, nope, we aren't. Um, uh, we had already the communication on the global approach, uh, which is really um, uh, rethinking uh, our approach in, in, in a more strategic way to international cooperation. Then a year later, uh, there was the, the toolkit on tackling foreign interference, which is a, a guidance document of, let's say, 50 pages that uh, provide uh, inspiration for uh, RPOs, uh, research performing organizations. 
usually I say universities, but I, I, I see that, it, that this doesn't work. So I, I should say RPOs, our research performing organizations. Um, what we see, not everyone has read this toolkit, of course, 50 pages, that's not doable. But we, we, we see that uh, member states, for instance, put this in, um, um, uh, in uh, translate, take elements from it in their national guidelines or in their uh, um, uh, guidelines at, uh, at, uh, at uh, RPO level. Now, there have been other uh, uh, elements, also mutual, such as a mutual learning exercise, uh, and now most recently the economic security strategy. That's the background at the EU level. Um, maybe most of you also know that May last year there was a debate in the Competitiveness Council where for the first time 27 ministers of research uh, discussed uh, research security. Um, also in the recitals is um, why is it necessary that the EU takes action? That's the subsidiarity question. Uh, um, uh, is, is it really necessary that we always have, have to demonstrate that EU action is needed and that, that it's, it's not possible to do this at a, at a lower level? Now, there we have two, two, two elements. One is uh, we have the European research area, which should be a borderless area within the EU uh, for research and innovation. And what we see is that uh, some member states are uh, taking safeguarding measures, some don't. And those that do uh, take different approaches. Um, and if you if this 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 is still early days in our view, if you would continue this line uh, and 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 look in a couple of years or, huh, uh, or maybe sooner than you think, uh, there can be tensions within the era. Uh, for, for instance, if you if you if you build a consortium for uh, for a program for for a research project, um, maybe uh, what you don't want is that. Uh, certain partners from certain countries that do not have safeguards in place are then, yeah, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's difficult. Uh, are we allowing this partner in? Now, that kind of tensions, you don't want to have that. That's one uh, thing, so the, the integrity of the era, uh, but also consistency. And, and when I say consistency, I mean consistent, the, the consistent approach, cohe consistent approach between member states, that's one thing. But also, don't don't forget the consistency at the EU level, national level, and uh, RPO level. I give you one example. Um, um, imagine that uh, at EU level, uh, we say that um, semiconductors needs to be protected. So in Horizon Europe, you cannot fund certain uh, partnerships. Uh, I mean, certain projects involving partners from certain third countries. But then uh, the researcher would go, would turn to the national funding agency and we'll get the funding anyway. So then, you know, the effectiveness of the measure is, is of course, uh, void. It's, 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 it's not, uh, same goes, imagine um, that uh, Horizon Europe funding not, not available because of the risks, national funding not available because of the risks, so consistency. But then the, the third country partner uh, offers to the university in the EU to say, well, okay, we can fund it. We, we will fund it in entirely. <laughs> so that's, of course, the, the worst uh, scenario in a way. Then uh, you're fully re dependent on the, the country you want to protect yourself from. Um, and, 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 and there's no uh, checks or, or safeguards whatsoever. So that's, uh, that's the story. Um, and please, uh, organizers, if I'm uh, too slow, then uh, just make a sign and I will speed up. I can do this presentation in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. <laughs> um, let's go to the next one, because the next sec uh, section after recitals, we, we have a section on scope. And what we do there, I, I will just I'm not going through all of them, but two of them are, are, are I think, relevant to present to you. Um, this, this document offers, uh, if, uh, once adopted, we have in the EU a common definition of what we what we mean when we say research security. And that's an added value because conceptually, um, <laughs> many concepts are floating around. Knowledge security, research security, responsible internationalization, uh, secure, uh, trusted research, uh, safeguarding, re now, yeah, a tackling foreign interference, all these terminal. It is a sign, in my view, it is a sign that this is early days, the concepts are not mature yet. Uh, 
So this is a contribution to the maturity of the concept uh, conceptual development. Research security is defined in a broad way. So it's not only not only about this uh, top level technology which leaks to third countries uh, and is used for the military. That's not the only, that's one of the elements. It's not the only thing. Sometimes I hear uh, from uh, uh, from the uh, from an audience or if I'm in a, in, in a conversation with some, well, in my institution, it's not it's not top, top, top level. So I don't have to worry. Well, <laughs> that's too that's too quick. No, uh, there's other elements, uh, other other risks to international cooperation that need to be considered. Uh, for instance, the second one would be malign influence, so interference in research. Um, imagine that you're fully dependent on uh, on funding from one third country, um, and you would say, okay, well that I I'm I don't feel comfortable writing about certain issues. Um, because that might, if it's too critical of this third country, then yeah, um, I'm risking my funding. So that's that's actually also affecting uh, research integrity. There's a clear link there. Um, uh, and also think of situations where uh, a student or a researcher is actually uh, from a third country, is actually a victim as well, is pressured to do certain things. Um, uh, or uh, is invited to meetings and to to report back on uh, on the content of uh, what he or she is doing. The third element would be uh, ethical violation. So um, the end use of the research is um, it's used in a way that, for instance, contrary to human rights, uh, to suppress minorities or to 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 uh, mon uh, to survey certain groups um, and. As a university, as a researcher, of course, you don't want to be complicit to that. You, you don't want to be involved in that kind of uh, things. So therefore, the, 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 the question is with research security, the question is um, uh, if this, this can be foreseen, if this can be foreseen, uh, then uh, you may want to abandon it or to take measures to, to ensure it doesn't happen. So that's research security. Um, often, so uh, uh, the way I put it is that uh, legally it might not be prohibited. So if you look at the law, uh, you are allowed to engage with military academy in China, to give an example. Um, legally speaking, there's nothing preventing you from doing that. But is it desirable? Uh, is it in line with what your university or RPO stands for? We go to the next one, risk appraisal. That's another element, another definition uh, that is uh, hopefully useful for, uh, for uh, all levels. Uh, when I say all levels, I, I mean uh, the RPO level, the RFO levels or the funding agencies, the member state level, the government level, ministries, and the EU level. Um, so that it's always a combination of factors uh, that defines risk. It, it, it's, uh, um, uh, you have to look at the position of your own, uh, the risk profile of your own organization, and, and you have to, uh, I mean, uh, 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 University of Technology has a different risk profile than uh, when it's a faculty of, uh, of, of arts or literature. Uh, that's one thing. Second thing is in which area am I, uh, am I, uh, uh, is the, is the, the cooperation uh, taking place? Then the, the country. Uh, um, uh, it is important to look, for instance, at the uh, Academic Freedom Index to give a, a very practical advice. Uh, and if you see that academic freedom is almost non-existent in the country, the researcher you're talking to might be very sincere and very honest, but he or she is in a in a in a political system. That is, yeah, where, where there is no academic freedom. So that has implications. You have to, it's not that you cannot work together with this with this researcher. You can, but you need to take this into account. You, you don't, don't be naive in this respect. And then the, the last one is, of course, the, the partner organization. Uh, is it linked to the military? What, what kind of status does it have? Uh, you need to do a, a little bit of due diligence uh, to see uh, with whom you are working uh, with. That's risk appraisal. Then, there's a next section on principles for responsible inter internationalization. How this should be read is when developing, when applying safeguarding measures, certain conditions should be met. Um, so you can you can read it in a way like um, I'm I'm uh, we, we're you, if you're developing uh, a measure uh, which clearly leads to stigmatization of uh, of of some groups it might not be 
a very good measure, you, you may want to reconsider. If um, uh, it, there's no self-governance and no responsibility for the sector, yeah, it, it, it might not be a good measure. If it really uh, violates academic freedom or limits severely academic freedom, it might not be such a good measure. So this is in a negative, I formulated it now in a negative way, but in a more positive way, uh, of course, uh, the, the measure that you make, uh, you're preparing uh, should be proportionate. It should respect academic freedom. Uh, it should rely on self-governance of the sector in line with institutional autonomy. Um, and we don't want any discrimination or stigmatization. Now, there's, there's more to it, but here you, you, get the, you get the picture, I think. Then we go into the recommendations. First, uh, the government level, so to say, uh, all recommended to be sure, all recommendations are addressed to the member states. That's that's how this works. That's the principle. But we we made uh, we specified it in uh, in different levels. We start at the government level. I think the main thing, the main recommendation would be engage in a dialogue with the sector and see who sh who is doing what and when. That's the basic question um, and come up with so that there, it, there's clarity on that, uh, that if if the government level uh, says, well, OK, we, we don't see a role for ourselves now that this is hypothetical, of course, but imagine that the government level would say, well, this is really clearly in the domain of uh, the institutional autonomy uh, and we don't see a role for ourselves. Yeah, that 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 implies that the sector is fully exposed, and 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 yeah, that that's uh, it's it's good to be clear clear about that, and that we all agree, yeah, in your in your country, and and therefore it needs to be done at national level, I think, because this is really uh, on uh, who is the who is responsible for what and who is going to do what. Now, then, uh, for for the government, also a recommendation is to create a support structure. Often we hear from uh, universities, RPOs, we, heard, we hear from them. Yes, we are ready to take responsibility. We understand that with academic freedom comes academic responsibility. But we need help. We need help from the government, more clarity, more guidance and support. And support is, for instance, government is, uh, has other sources of the threats and the, the risks. Uh, sometimes this is maybe uh, confidential information. Uh, it might be the intelligence uh, agency who, who's uh, they have a they should have a clear picture of uh, what is happening in the threat landscape, so to say. Um, find ways to share relevant information with the, with the universities and RPOs. If they if they don't have this information, they will not take action. Now, that's that's uh, behind uh, the support structure. Uh, of course, within government, I already gave an example. Uh, you should uh, cooperate with your colleagues. And this is not always existing. I, I speak from my own experience in a previous life. I was in the Ministry of Research. We really had to establish working relations with the security side of uh, government uh, and uh, different different languages, eh? different languages. Uh, you really have to. <laughs> it takes some time to understand each other. Um, I can give uh, interesting examples and anecdotes, but uh, for the sake of time, I, I don't. Um, strengthen the evidence base is a clear example, I, especially for our sector. Researchers want to see the evidence. If, if there's no evidence, they will not, you know, they, they, there's no buy-in. Um, and the last one is uh, create guidance for the private sector, because we left the, really the private sector, so companies, who also do research, we left that outside the scope of this recommendation. Why? This text is really about academic freedom, built on academic freedom institutional autonomy, which doesn't apply to the private sector. Um, uh, there are good examples, for instance, in the UK, Canada, where they have already uh, guidance for the sector, and you can, you can see that this is really a different language. This is a different language, and we need to do something, uh, I think, in the, in the, in the EU as well. Now, then we go to the research funding. I can be short there. Uh, it is uh, recommended that uh, national funding agencies and, and, and all funding agencies in the member states integrate one way or the other the uh, research security into their uh, funding application process. Um, so can be done by in the application form at a couple of simple easy to understand questions on uh, risks for uh, uh, research security um, so that the applicant thinks about it, uh, has an incentive to think about these things. 
And uh, yes, this also uh, implies that there should be someone on the funding organization who is able to read these answers <laughs> and make sense of it. Uh, so yes, uh, it, it also means that in the in the funding organization there is or 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 external but but linked to the funding organization there is someone able to read uh, these uh, parts so for instance at eu level on horizon europe there's a security appraisal procedure and um, the part on uh, on that the answers are uh, dealt with by dg home not dg uh, rtd uh, i can say more but let's uh, let's move on uh, then at the at the rpo level the uh, research performing organization level um, First of all, I, we, we fully understand that uh, not every RPO has the capacity and the resources to build up uh, expertise and, and uh, uh, advisory board, what, what, what have you. So um, we, we see examples in the EU where the sector organizes itself or groups of organizations pool their resources. Uh, for instance, setting up uh, some expertise uh, center or whatever on um, 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 uh, knowledge on contemporary China or with, with the, uh, uh, it's also about languages, Mandar uh, language skills, Mandarin, Russian, whatever. Um, you need these language skills because the English website of the institution is probably fine. Uh, you need to write, uh, you need to read the, the original uh, language uh, version. Uh, is the um, the impression we have, and indeed every RPO should have some form of internal risk management procedure in place. Every RPO already has risk management procedures in place. Think of financial risk. You probably have a financial department in, uh, who, who is looking into that and helps you with uh, mitigating financial risks. Same goes for legal risks. You have a legal department or a legal advisor who who helps you, uh, who will help you uh, mitigate legal risk now uh, you add to that uh, a risk management for uh, recent security that's the that's the basic idea so that in the organization people can turn to this person or or this group of persons uh, when they don't know what to do or feel insecure um i think i will not i mean Everything you will get the slides afterwards, eh? so you can you can read it. Uh, I, I just pick a couple of them. Next level is the EU level. So at the EU level, um, first of all, this is about um, um, help supporting member states and and stakeholders to actually sort of implement this recommendation. So we will use existing structures. Um, in the European research area, ERA Forum, ERAC, subgroup on global approach, uh, uh, what have you, all these existing structures. Uh, uh, we're looking for ways to involve, to use these to, to bring forward uh, and implement and help uh, member states to implement uh, the, the content of the recommendation. That's one thing. That's one thing. And of, also, we, we will do monitoring and reporting uh, at EU level. Next uh, element uh, that we put in the, the proposal is to establish a European Center of Expertise on Research Security. Uh, this has been done before on other topics. Uh, if you look on the, if you would go to the GRC website, uh, you will see that they have uh, 20 already, 20 uh, so-called knowledge resources. And knowledge resources can be either uh, expertise centers or competence centers or has, names differ, but the idea is the same, namely, this uh, center of expertise in, uh, invests in the evidence base for policy making, uh, do research, uh, whatever, and uh, create a community of practice. So uh, bringing together expertise from across Europe. This is really directed to the to the sector, uh, to the to the to the to the sector uh, across Europe. Not so much to the member states because there we use the era governance structures. Uh, another element is that we uh, also to show that this is not a DGRTD uh, uh, <laughs> approach. Uh, situational awareness, that's that's really situational aware awareness is a sort of uh, formulation for um, uh, the more uh, confidential part of uh, government, where uh, also intelligence agencies, they, they develop this, this kind of briefings, etc. Um, uh, we want to inv we, we're engaging with them as well to see uh, how they can help us. Uh, the same goes for re resilience testing. Uh, this has been done in the energy sector, for instance. So you create a methodology 
uh, like an audit maybe. I mean, maybe yeah, uh, you can think of an audit, uh, a testing methodology, and then the member states voluntarily can uh, use this methodology together with the sector. Um, and and of course, if 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 uh, the member states who who participate, we can uh, after that we can also discuss results. Uh, there's more to say, but maybe I hope this is enough to to get the picture. Uh, develop due diligence tools. Yeah, that's also an uh, urgent one. Universities would say due diligence. Yes, uh, we can. We, of course, we will look into our partners. But where where can we find information? Uh, where, where should we look? Um, and uh, one thing which is often mentioned is, for instance, uh, and maybe many of you have heard of it, is the ASPI tracker, ASPI, which is a think tank in Australia. They created it. You can go to the website, you will see the Defense tra University tracker, and they have Chinese universities with a description on the, ri the risk level. Now, it feels a bit uncomfortable that we uh, all rely on one tool, which is developed in Australia, um, which is funded by the Australian Ministry of Defense. And more, most important, may, maybe most importantly, it, it was a project and it's not updated. So uh, we, we think we need, uh, we should uh, develop something uh, in, in, in Europe, uh, which is difficult and, and will take time, but uh, needs to be done anyway. Stakeholder forum is a sort of uh, event that we uh, we would like to uh, organize for uh, for for the stakeholders, and of course we cooperate with uh, key uh, key partners around the globe: US, UK, Canada, uh, others, uh, Japan. Yeah. Uh, next slide. That's uh, well. We we will send the slides so that so, and then you can click on it, uh, and that's it. Thank you very much for your uh, attention. Uh, I will stop sharing. I will try to stop sharing my slides so that we can see each other. Thank you so much, Mirko. It was really great. <laughs> we heard a lot about also the background and also about the concrete recommendations. So uh, I can already uh, raise some questions, but uh, as Eva also put it into the chat, so as long as uh, I'm talking now, uh, you have some more time to digest what Mirko has just uh, shared with you and then raise some additional ones. Uh, uh, so there were some questions about exactly about the center of expertise. So uh, do, I, do I understand it correctly that then this will be prepared by the JRC? Uh, so there is already a clear methodology. It will be just on a different topic or so. Can you give some more information about that? Yeah, y y yes and no. <laughs> so yeah no um so i i we, we take let's put it this way we, we we look very carefully into what the grc already has and the expertise they have and and, and we take inspiration from that approach that's that's the, that's our line of thinking whether or not the grc will host it that's um uh, the, the discussion is still ongoing Mm -hmm. I, I, okay. I, I, I'm very open now, but this is this is the, the situation. Also, another source of inspiration uh, could be the uh, Center of Excellence on Hybrid Threats, uh, Center of Exp uh, Excellence on Countering uh, Hybrid Threats, mm -hmm. uh, to be sure. It's in Finland uh, and it's uh, it's an organization that uh, that focuses on hybrid threats uh, on any sector. But they are also looking into uh, research, uh, the research sector. So uh, we're we're in touch with them as well. I see that Eleanor has uh, raised her hand. So maybe I give her the floor quickly. Uh, hi, Emiko. Um, I have a yes, question. Hello. Uh, I have a question that I'm more, we're more interested to see how you discuss it within the RTD. Um, you you raised, for example, like. Uh, the, one of the reasons why you're doing this is that because you don't want imbalance in, in Europe that, for example, that research cannot apply for funding from EU, but they can get funding on national level for, for, for collaborations. Um, so and, and I just, my, my question is connected to that. Uh, I mean, that is somehow happening right now. If you take, for example, in quantum technology, there is a, you know, a lot of calls where countries outside who is not member states or um, have some uh, have to say, uh, been approved in, in some other ways cannot participate, uh, but you can of course have national calls in quantum technology where you participate, even bilateral ones. Um, and if you take, and, and my thinking here is like, how do you discuss that within the research uh, with the, within RTD, the fact that a lot of associate countries now are not 
passing their risk assessment. They cannot be part of these calls quite often. Um, and at the same time that we have the iconic security uh, document to say that we should also partner with countries. Uh, and at the same time, we're actually excluding those partners, those ones that are associated or want to become associated. So how do you discuss that balance, the fact that we actually now are getting into a situation where even countries we have said should be our partners cannot take part in calls in, in and we are actually sort of are directing them to national calls or bilateral calls, like in quantum technology is a good example, I think, for that. So how is that discussed within you? Yeah. It, it, it. Excellent question, and um, again, it's an excellent question because it's it's not easy to answer. <laughs> um, so the the, the recommend the council recommendation is really directed to the member states and to national funding and uh, and 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 the and the RPOs. I mean, yeah, um, and we're not uh, so here and there. There is a reference to the to the EU level funding, and that there should be consistency. Uh, uh, but how to how to bring this about is of course uh, not easy. Um, and I think your question is more about uh, the, the 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 safeguards in Horizon Europe, and we're not really tackling these in this recommendation. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, and it's delicate because um, this is also part of the discussion that already has started, I think, on the FP10. Uh, and that's such a big project uh, here in RTD. I, 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 I think every colleague is involved in that in some way. So, um, but uh, be, be sure that uh, uh, research security and the whole discussion is 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 uh, also an element that we uh, take into uh, account. Uh, yeah, this this sounds very vague, but I, th for instance, they uh, here in inside RTD they made a list of issues that we need to reflect on. Uh, research security is on that list, and 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 it means that there is a reflection group on on that uh, as well. Um, it's not an answer. I understand that, but uh, this is the best I can uh, can give you. For it, it was a trick, tricky question to yeah. uh, I understand that. <laughs> I, I just thought it's, you actually brought up yourself that conflict. I thought it was yeah. interesting yeah. to hear what your thoughts mean. Thank you. Anyway, so I just quickly react. I saw something about dual use and the defense fund, and uh, we will more talk about it on 4th of March. So I would skip those two questions. But there, there were two questions which are uh, in a way linked to each other. And it's about the local versus EU level. So who should do what? And uh, there is a related one that what can small organizations do really locally? So how, what would be the expectations and uh, how do you see that? How can they manage then with these requirements? I think this is really relevant for many of the participants. So yeah. what is the expectations uh, for, for really small organizations with limited uh, capacities? Um, the, 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 the first one had this, this uh, uh, local risk appraisal. Um, uh, yeah, I think in the end, it's, it's really, it, it boils down to a researcher or a professor or a research group who wants to involve in, in a project. Uh, and, and there, the, the risk appraisal needs to happen in the end. Uh, and of course, uh, this is not a, a security expert, this, this researcher. So he or she needs help. Uh, inside the organization, and if in, inside the organization uh, there's no clarity, then uh, there should be someone to turn to at, at the national government level, maybe where you can say, "Well, hey, listen, we have a we have an, a, a difficult situation. We don't know what to do. What do you think?" Um, uh, and this is this is in addition to a uh, communication channel, which should be ongoing, uh, exchanging information about uh, threats and risks. Um, so that, this this is maybe about the relation be, uh, between the the where the risk appraisal takes place and uh, what kind of support is needed um, inside an organization inside an RPO. I can imagine that there's a sort of escalation that um, uh, yeah, the, the risk management procedure can be the same goes for legal or financial. Eh? If if it, it's it's high risk, then it will go to a higher level, and and mm -hmm. it will be the the, the board or the, the the highest level in the in the organization who has to decide, who has to give the green light. Um, the other question is also about um, capacity building. Eh? Yeah. So small uh, organization, yeah. what can what yeah. what is expected or what can they really do? Yeah. 
Yeah, so on the one hand, uh, there's there's uh, part uh, if uh, on the one hand you could say, well, okay, how how can we pool uh, resources in the sector? That's that's one uh, element that can uh, that I can uh, can can highlight. Uh, the the other thing is also that, um, yeah. <laughs> So, for instance, uh, uh, we, we've seen uh, if you look at member states, uh, we, we see that in some countries there is uh, uh, the, the university invests in uh, by hiring someone who has a security background. It can also be, uh, I mean, uh, don't think, uh, don't forget the uh, dual use, uh, the dual use regulation or sanctions, compliance with sanctions, compliance with dual use. It's the same, you know. You, you also need that kind of expertise. It's this, it goes in the same direction. So this person can be uh, responsible for the different uh, elements. Eh? So maybe that this is already available in many organizations. Uh, if not, yeah, you see also in countries, uh, I give an example uh, uh, in France, for instance, where um, they have a system where someone from the government is then seconded, if I understand correctly, seconded to certain universities uh, with a security background. Uh, and then the, I think I, I would assume that uh, the funding or the salary is paid by by the government side. But this 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 just to show that this can organize be organized in different ways. Um, uh, we heard uh, without disclosing the discussion uh, behind closed doors in the research working party, but we we heard from uh, different countries that indeed uh, uh, for uh, capacity building uh, the question was indeed also raised: uh, Is there any financial support available? Mm. At this point, the answer is no, uh, but we we heard it and 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 we're looking around what can be done there. So in a way, the national and even the U European level might support then. Uh, Let's hope, <laughs> or we will see the. Yeah, that, or that's why create, you need the feedback. Yeah. Yes, from the. This this, this idea, I I fully understand this idea of creating um, a financial incentive to 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 help uh, ministries or uh, to 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 do something. It it it, it will be more uh, towards the member states uh, to to be sure we cannot uh, fund. The whole Europe. Yeah. At the very beginning, there was a question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So sorry, Mirko. Sorry, sorry. No, no, go, go. So at the very beginning, there was a question, which is a new perspective again about uh, hiring uh, researchers from third countries. So that if you had a uh, look at uh, this aspect of uh, preparing the document, so are we not then uh, in a way excluding some uh, excellent talents if we take uh, this research, pers uh, research security perspective too seriously? So this is hiring and uh, the talent circulation. So did you take this into consideration? Yeah, yeah, sure, but uh, yeah, uh, what one it, it should be uh, as we say, it's it's both open and safe. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, so if you if you receive uh, a resume from a candidate, uh, it looks too good to be true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> maybe it is. Eh? There, there, maybe there is something behind it. So you, you, it's just an incentive. Uh, or uh, please uh, look into this candidate. Have a look. Check a little bit. Uh, open source. Uh, it's not. Uh, this is nothing uh, secret. Uh, it, it, is it credible? Mm. Is is this really? Uh, sometimes you see resumes or uh, that are not credible. It it looks brilliant, but it cannot be trusted. Yeah, I think a bit uh, academic freedom is also related to this topic. Uh, well, who, how far yeah. are you free to choose? But I, and there was a question already before uh, we received in advance, but uh, you already touched upon this uh, quite a lot. So I would not raise that one. But uh, there is one on, on due diligence. So that mm -hmm. uh, do you know about any tools uh, that are being developed for the research sector that could be used then more, more widely? Um. Yeah, uh, I, I know that. So, so for instance, uh, uh, we, we, we created uh, uh, already the toolkit, of course, uh, the toolkit mm -hmm. on tackling foreign interference. Th that is a, a resource that, yeah, but in, uh, uh, many member states now have guidance documents in place. Many of them. We we had a collection. It's online as well. It's an uh, it's called annotated uh, annotated collection of secure research something like that I, I, I can share the link uh, with you if you want but this is uh, okay. we asked uh, we asked an organization to to compile and with links to all the different guidance documents um, uh, so you see that it's 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 a lot 
it's a lot. So if mm-hmm. you, if 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 you think about uh, in, in your country about uh, drafting something, uh, there's a, a lot of sources of inspiration. So that's that's one type of tools, let's say. But there's uh, other uh, source. Uh, yeah, I, I can imagine that that uh, had, uh, I already mentioned uh, international rankings. Uh, some of them have on on rule of law or uh, de- democracy or academic freedom and th- that kind of uh, things that give you an impression of what what kind of country is this? What is the country profile? Um, uh, I, I already mentioned the uh, the ASP tracker and that we want to create something uh, at EU level for that as an alternative. Um, yes, yeah. you also mentioned these communities of practice. I'm sure yeah. that and, also and, and, it and, uh, would be very useful to share such. Uh, ah, you I, have. The I wanted to uh, to also <laughs> to to refer to this one. This is um, um, the 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 risk appraisal. The definition is in the Commission proposal, but we mm-hmm. uh, also made a, a fact sheet um, uh, which has no status, is not negotiated, but it's on the website um, uh, where we 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 went into more detail of what kind of questions and etc. And I, I, I hope we can in the coming months, we can uh, discuss it with stakeholders and with experts to mm-hmm. see uh, how to further improve it uh, mm-hmm. so that we can have an updated version uh, end of the year or so. I don't know. Thank but this, you. hopefully um, it has no status, but hopefully it's useful <laughs> nevertheless. Or, or it will develop further, we never yeah, yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> The, we received two more very interesting questions. One is about the internal uh, aspect of research security, <clears throat> because we usually concentrate on the international perspective and on third countries, but uh, uh, it might also happen on uh, nationally. So did you take this into consideration? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so no, that's no, our yeah. own business. You have to somewhere, our... <laughs> because then um, I, I see the point. Huh? It's, it's um, uh, because... You can also say, well, okay, cybersecurity should also be part of it. But then if you include, so there are references, be, be sure, there, there are references to, to cybersecurity, but it's a completely different science almost, uh, cybersecurity. Mm. Um, uh, another question could be indeed uh, in, in, in inside EU or inside the, the terrorism. Uh, you can also include terrorism, um, uh, threats from uh, from companies, maybe uh, economics, uh, espionage. So before uh, you have to limit it somewhere, you have to focus a little bit because I think this type, that, that's the point, this type of risks uh, needs a specific uh, approach. That's, mm-hmm. that's, the, that's maybe the thinking behind it. But it, it's always. I, I, I therefore I, I, I like to. I think the question is is justified. Um, uh, yeah, you, you have to you have to focus it somewhere. Otherwise, uh, it, yes. it becomes too. Yes, you too could vague. you could broaden it further forever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> forever. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, the the other question is about uh, economic versus uh, values and principles. So what is what do we protect more? But I suppose that. Uh, we protect uh, both. So at least you also mentioned that this ethical part is uh, or, or influencing. It's a very important part of the risks uh, and also the, what, what we try to protect. So uh, and we have uh, received a comment on, on the uh, this talent uh, topic. But I do believe that, uh, as you mentioned, it, it, it doesn't mean that uh, people are not allowed to hire from other countries. It's just that we have to be more cautious. But um, Mm-hmm. Or we we have yeah. to take into consideration some more factors, but it's not that uh, we should avoid any countries. I really I'm really positive about this country agnostic approach, by the way. So we we don't say that there are devil countries, <laughs> and then yeah. we really have to stop cooperating with those. But we just have to take into consideration more factors. Uh, I think we are really approaching the end of the meeting. So I oh. I see we received one more message. I just have a quick look and. I also apologize uh, not to ask all the questions uh, we received in advance, but I'm sure there will be uh, some continuation of all these discussions about this topic. So we can we can continue also uh, the questions and answers in a, another time. So I just want to ask, uh, really t- say thank you once more to uh, Mirko for, for this excellent presentation, also for the excellent Q&A part and all the knowledge you shared with us. Uh, and also thank you for sh- that we can share the slides. 
I also want to inform the colleagues that we uh, recorded uh, the whole event, so it will be also shared uh, online. Uh, on we will we will inform you. We will send out uh, uh, an email in which uh, we can share both the slide and uh, both this recording. And I just want to remind you about the next event, which will be on the fourth of March, uh, about um, the dual use documents or so the white paper. So the dual use uh, uh, aspects will be covered there uh, more in detail. So Mirko, a big applause for you. And uh, thank you really for your time and also for everybody who joined us today. And please. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And come if you uh, please join us on the 4th of March if you have time. Thank you, Mirko. Okay, bye bye. Thank you, nice colleagues. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wow, so many thank you messages. So. Yeah. <laughs>